Good morning and welcome to The Review, the Instagram live podcast where Kanama news, culture, and coffee, Kanama news, culture, and stories are shared over the warmth of coffee. So glad you guys are joining us today for this wonderful episode of The Review featuring our friend and incredible Kanama player and community developer, Whirly Rhea, otherwise known as Rhea Smith. Quill Flow team member. I'm super excited about this one. If you guys don't know Rhea, first off, she is incredibly, incredibly good at Kanama, but more than that, she is always optimistic and will push you to better yourself and better your play. This is a highly anticipated episode, guys. I look back at some, some of the analytics of past episodes before they launch, and guys, you guys went nuts on this one. You guys were so kind, so, so optimistic, and so excited for this episode featuring Rhea. So I'm excited for it, and I believe you guys are as well. So to give you a little insight into where we're going today, we're going to be diving behind the scenes into Rhea's life and electronic adventure to pull out some of the characteristics, hobbies, and journey of Rhea towards where she is today as a Quill Flow member. But as always, before we dive into the episode, we like to take a little bit of time to thank our listeners and to shout some of our fan base out. So I want to know down in the chat, what are you guys drinking this morning? You know, as always, I am genuinely and generally drinking AeroPressed coffee. In particular, I thought it was going to be fun to bring up the bag of coffee that I was drinking today, which is from Phil and Sebastian's. So a local roaster. You guys have probably heard me talk about them a lot. This is one of their Kenyan blends. And, and literally, guys, it's one of my favorite coffees I think I've ever had. It's so good. And I can pick it up at my local grocery store. It's wonderful. I made this with my AeroPress. I, I get a question probably once a week from, from someone in, in our audience asking, how do you brew your AeroPress coffee? I wrote a guide for you guys. It's on the website at cafekanama.com. Uh, it's been up there for a little while. Go check it out. If you're trying to figure out how I brew my coffee and you want to brew your coffee the same way, I don't know why you would because we're all individuals and all create creatives. Uh, you can go head over to the website, check out the guide. I'm going to be doing one for Chemex in the near future as well because I finally got filters. And so I've been brewing a little bit of Chemex in the morning. So let's see what you guys are drinking this morning. We got Han Biggs with the coffee with a little almond milk right on. Uh, Rager Rabbit 333 with the Yerba CV Radio with some water. Yeah, we always got to have some water, guys. Today, in particular, I, I mixed it up. We're drinking LaCroix. LaCroix, if you want to sponsor this show, I'm here. Monster Energy from Kendama Goblin. We got Marcus Lander with his Friday night beer. Oh, yeah, you're in Europe. Oh, my goodness. Keys Kendama with the coffee and Chan the Man with the Canada Dry Ginger Ale, baby. Lots of love for Rhea in here. So good to see some EDM Pog. And we got Chad Covington brewing up some Chemex. A Franken cup of coffee, he says. A mix of two blends, an Ethiopian and Costa Rica. And he finished off all four bags. So he just took all of his bags of coffee together and brewed a cup with it. I've definitely done that before. It's not always the best, but sometimes it works out. Wonderful. All right, guys, we're going to get Rhea on here right away, and we are going to dive in to this week's episode of The Brew View. Let's see if we can get her on here right away. Rhea, um, we actually have a little technical difficulty, actually. You need to upgrade your app. It looks like you are on the old version of Instagram, and you can't join my live right now. So, Rhea, do you want to take, like, a minute? and go and fix that real quick. And we will chat with our audience here for a quick second. And we'll see you back in about a minute and 30 seconds. Hopefully, hopefully you got good internet to update quick. Let's see what you guys are drinking. We got Chad, uh, again, he's drinking his Chemex. We got a few other people in here, some friends. We got uh, Kenoma POV, what are you drinking? Black Rifle Beyond Black with a little bit of honey. Do you guys put honey in your coffee? Interesting. I've never put honey in my coffee. I don't really put cream or sugar. But my, actually, here's a quick aside story for, for those of you here while we wait for Rhea. Uh, one, uh, we have a new roommate that lives with us. He was one of my old college roommates. Uh, his name is Jason, and he is a coffee addict just like myself. And he moved in uh, to our home for the next couple months. And with him, he brought an espresso machine. And so we've been making some lattes in the morning. Uh, I drink mine with cashew milk uh, because I'm lactose intolerant. And if you guys are wondering what the best dairy alternative is, in my opinion, it's cashew milk. Cashew milk is so good. Uh, coconut milk is also decent, uh, but coconut milk doesn't froth as well, so you can't make as good of latte art with it. So cashew milk tastes super good, and you can make good latte art with it. Coconut milk doesn't froth very good. D tastes good, though. I know that some of you guys probably like almond milk. Soy if you drink soy milk, oh, that stuff's the worst. 
All right, Rio, let's see if we can get you in here now. There we go. We are good. Rhea. Hi. Welcome here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure and privilege. We had a, a, just a brief, slight technical difficulty. We got to keep, yeah, my keep up to date on our apps. <laughs> I thought it was automatically updating, I know. but I guess I didn't have it set that way. Hey, you know what, though? So I, I actually had the biggest issue ever for the longest time with Instagram uh, on lives in particular and, and in general on their other features. I'm like literally always the last person to get updates on Instagram. That's me, yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Because, <laughs> it okay, does, so, I'm always behind on updates. I'm like, why isn't it working properly? And then oh. I'm like, oh, maybe I should update it. <laughs> yeah, if, it actually genuinely frustrated me for so long because I, I, I do some of our social media for the company I work for. And so I have access to that Instagram. It's on the same phone as oh, my gosh. Instagram. Yeah. And on that account, we had the new updates. I could use the new like text features on stories and I could have 30 uh -huh. second reels. But then on Cafe Kendama, like my personal Instagram, I didn't have 30 second reels. I only had the 15 second ones and I didn't have all the new text features or anything. And it's like, literally it was just switching accounts and I'd have all the updates. And then my other one didn't. Literally That's the, the most thing. annoying thing. The same thing happened with my baking account. Still to this day, when I go on it, I can click the notification. It's still there, like the little heart that used to have mm. the notifications on the tabs. It's still there on my baking account, which I think is weird. But all my yeah. other accounts, it's not like that. Instagram, you need to fix that. I know, so it's just quick. some weird bug I don't understand. Well, I think I think the reason they do it is because they like to roll it out and test it on, you know, larger groups and then they roll it out to yeah. the next. And so they kind of randomly select accounts. But I think if you're a creator account and you're doing things uh, that are, you know, creator specific, you should get yeah. those updates early. Because I was should, held yeah. back for so long for doing reels. There were so many clips that I wanted to post that were like 20 seconds as a and reel. And you were like, oh, why can't I, like, I, I can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I totally feel that. Well, Rhea, welcome to the review. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we'll, we'll dive in in a little bit, but we always like to ask a couple uh, opening questions here. And we, I always like to kick it off with knowing uh, what are you drinking this morning or afternoon, wherever you, wherever yeah, you tune in it's, from. It's noon where I am right now in Houston. Uh, we've actually, since we just had like a weird ice age here, my coffee got delayed that I had ordered and it's not going to get here until March 1st. So thankfully, Tara Lynn gave me some coffee last night from Bones Coffee. It's delicious. Okay. She let me try some last night, and it was super good. It was the Cinnabon one. Okay. I, there's a I've, bunch of different flavors. Yeah, I've heard of Bones. I'm not familiar with it. To be honest, I need to educate myself better on the American roasters. I know a mm -hmm. couple of the big ones, but I don't know a lot of them. I'm beginning to get a little bit more versed. I got a, I got a little pod of friends here in Calgary, Alberta, uh, where – we do group buys. And so the one guy kind of heads it up. He'll contact roasters from around the world and be like, Hey, That's cool. I have a group of like 30 people here that would love to buy. And can we do a wholesale order to get in like 30 or 40 bags of coffee? And then we, we often get to try different coffees from all over oh, the that's world because so of him. Cool. Yeah, it, it's super fun. So we've had a couple from the States. There was one we had, oh man, I can't even remember the brand name right now. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find it. Uh, it's still in my recycling or something. Yeah, else. I'm open to like new coffee brands too. Like I'm open to try anything, especially flavored coffee. Like I love flavored coffee. Do you, so are you, I'm going to ask a, a blunt question here. What's your Starbucks order and are you a Starbucks <laughs> fan? So I used to be a really big Starbucks fan. I'm not going to lie. I used to go there every morning. I used to get a grande caramel latte with an extra shot. That was like my go-to. I love caramel. I think we, that, that's where we all start, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's what I drank a lot there. And then now I just drink like oat milk with some Nespresso. I have a milk frother at home. So just froth it up. Right Make on. at home. Yeah. Right on. Cool. Well, let, let's jump into a couple of our questions here, and then we'll dive into the meat of our conversation. I know so many people here. Uh, a, first off, you are incredibly well loved by the community. Uh, let <laughs> it's me so say, crazy how so fast cool. all that happened. I love it. Like this community's changed my life for the better, for sure. Oh, uh, that is so <laughs> cool to hear. Uh, I I knew that this was going to be a, a pretty anticipated episode when I made the post, and I saw like. 50 or 60 people share the post of their stories like this never happens it was like what? whoa this is so cool oh my gosh uh, and so i was like man the, the people love 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 ria and so we want to dive into what your journey has been like but before we do i want to know if you could teach any one person their first spike past or present who would it be okay so i knew you were gonna ask this and of course the first person that popped into my head was mac miller because i love him more than anything but i know he's played kendama before has he actually and so yeah, there's this picture that's gone around and I actually got sent it when I first started playing and it was him just like playing with a Kendama 
And I was like, oh my gosh, like my idol played with a kendama. Like that's so cool. That, that's really cool. I didn't and know then, that. Yeah. And so, and then I was like, well, I know he's played. So I was like, who else could I think of? And then the second person that popped into my head was Seth Rogen. Cause Ooh. I think he's just so funny. And I would love to like see him like learn kendama and just like hear his laugh. <laughs> I think it would just be such a fun time. Yeah, uh, yeah, do you have a favorite Seth Rogen movie? Super bad. Okay, per, cla yeah. classic choice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, like, yeah, that he did all that, and then probably Pineapple Express would be like my second one that he's like acted in and all that. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, I, actually, so quick aside on Mac Miller, I've been trying to build better habits in my life, uh, and so I've been slowly trying to work out a little bit more. You know, try, trying to you know get into shape my back is like killing me recently i have bad posture i'm trying to fix i feel you on that <laughs> you just said that and i sat up straight when you said I know. posture like, i was like oh yeah i need to stop slouching <laughs> everybody else in the chat did the same don't worry probably yeah <laughs> we're all like oh yeah we all play kendama we got bad we're knees all just and bad like hunched over yeah. <laughs> all the time like no you need to be proper when you can yeah, but one of the things that I've been doing, and so we, we have this chin-up bar in our house, and my boss and I have been doing uh, chin-ups every day and push-ups and stuff, whatever. It's like wow. five minutes of workout. We're not yeah. we're not intense by any yeah. means. Yeah, but a little but, bit does go a long way. So. Exactly. But one of the things that we were, we've were we done as a way to like uh, get us into more of that habitual routine of setting the mood for the workout every time, even if it's five minutes, is we play the same song every single day of that month for that workout. So, you know, That's we do the same thing pretty much every month and it's a, like a mental hooking. So it's yeah. like, hey, it's kind of cool because let's say you're trying to do 20 chin-ups in that like, you know, minute or, or before the song is over, you know, all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's still a minute left in the song. I got better, I got faster. And there's some cool psychological effects there. But the, the reason I mentioned that is the song that we've chosen for the month is Blue World by Mac Miller. And it's such a good oh, song. For I actually out. have the poster right there on my wall, the Circles poster. Oh, no way. I weirdly have not listened to Circles yet. I haven't gained the courage to, like, hear his voice say new things. I don't know. Uh -huh. I just grew up listening to him, and he, like, helped me through a lot of stuff growing up. And so it's just, like, I haven't had the right moment to listen to Circles fully yet. Yeah, I, to be honest, I'm actually not that familiar with Mac Miller. I just heard that song, I think, on a Kendama edit, and I was like, yo. That that's song a blew song. up everywhere, yeah. It's, it's a got such a cool I've, beat. I've heard snippets of it, like, especially on Twitter and stuff, but, like, I haven't gained the courage to listen to the whole song or any of the songs yet. In due time, in due time. Yeah. Okay, so la last question before we jump in, and uh, I saw Austin Donovan down in the chat mention this. Yeah, guys, go drop your questions down in the Q&A tool. We've set aside some time in today's episode to ask your questions. Uh, we, we got questions that were put on the post. If you're a patron, you can always put them in early and make sure your questions are asked. Uh, but if you're here live with us, drop them in that Q&A tool. So last question, before we really jump into the conversation, get to know Rhea Smith, I want to know who is the most inspiring player for you today? Inspiring player? Oh, wow. Like tricks or that's kind of hard. However you, I feel yeah. like, however you um, want to interpret that. I feel like I have so many different people that inspire me for so many different reasons. This is hard. Um, well, for tricks, I would definitely say, like, Marcus Lunder is, like, my biggest inspo for tricks. Like, the second I found him, I stalked his Instagram and was just like, whoa, what is this? And I just, like, was like, I want to try this. Like, this is so cool. And then, like, all the girls in the community really, like, push me every day. Like, I want to be, like, like, friends with them. Like, they push me to be, like, a better person. We all push each other. Like, we all hype each other up, give each other tips on what tricks to do and whatnot, like Cassie, Kells, Peachy, like, mm -hmm. they're friends that I've never met in person, and I talk to them every day, like, I feel like I would be lost without them at this point, so they're, like, my biggest inspos to keep keep going in the community and whatnot. Yeah, that's so cool, too. Do you guys have a group chat? I'm always curious. Yes, I knew it. we have a big Dama Girls group chat with all of us, yeah, I on knew Snapchat. It. I, I figured, that's cool. And shout out to Marcus Lander, he's down in the chat. Uh, lots oh, of hey, love to yeah. Marcus <laughs> as well. Cool. Well, Rhea, I want to take some time today and journey through your story. And, and what we've been doing more recently on past episodes is, is trying to, you know, go behind the scenes a little bit more. Uh, focus less on the tricks, less on the Ken, but really get to know the people that are behind the clips. I think a lot of us really get familiar with the types of tricks and the type of content that people release, but I think so often we miss out on the deeper connection of knowing who these people actually are. You know, I know who Marcus Lander is on his tricks, yeah. but I don't know anything about him. Yeah. I just know him from his clips and his edits and his tricks. 
also Marcus Lander and Lucas Sandgren, their old edits are some of my favorite edits. Those were like the yeah. first edits that I really got into when I, when I played. So sh shout out to Marcus. So yeah, he's real crazy. <laughs> Yeah, he is. So Rhea, take me back in time a little bit. I want to know before Kanama, who was Rhea Smith before she was Whirly Rhea? Um, well, I was just a girl who went to a lot of EDM shows and festivals, was a pastry student trying to get her degree. Just Pastries. nothing. Yeah, just nothing. I mean, I just, I'm only 21. So I graduated high school and then just like immediately went to college and started, you know, doing my basics and started going to pastry school. And I just finished school last semester so now I'm waiting to go to Europe so I can finish my baking journey there oh no way so can we wait whoa whoa take take me back <laughs> Sorry. When, did this, when did this baking journey begin probably when I was like six or seven years old I've always wanted to own my own bakery that's just something I've always wanted to do like of course I've you know thought about myself doing other things along the way but whenever I was starting to get like towards the end of high school and trying to figure out like what I really wanted to do baking was just always like my safe zone like I felt like that was a really good job to have you can still be super creative and like freedom but you still have to you know follow some sort of rules just kind of like how Kandama is too and mm. I just love the creativity with baking and I love making breads and chocolates like it's just so much fun to do so are you are you one of the the types of people in the in the cooking world that like to do both baking and cooking or are you just like no I really like baking yeah, no, I cannot cook. I do not like cooking <laughs> at all. That's just not my forte. Yeah, so so I was the opposite. A uh, little aside that no one no one here in the chat would probably know unless you, you really know me. When I was in high school, uh, I, I was that kid who took like all the home ec classes and I wasn't just in those classes to talk with the girls. I genuinely like <laughs> wanted to learn how to cook. I love cooking. I, I spent probably most of my free time at home in my basement watching the Food Network and watching like yeah, old Food Network shows. It's interesting. Oh. It's fun. So, yeah, it is. It is. And, and I originally was going to try and pursue a career as a chef. Uh, but once I was getting close to graduating uh, high school, I really started looking into it more and more. And I was like, whoa, 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 wait, hold up a second. You're telling me that I got to work more than eight hours a day, get paid less than I deserve, and get yelled at by customers all day? This sounds like a terrible yeah, place for me. It's it's a different world, but it's fun at the end of the day. I love it. But yeah, dealing with customers sometimes is just, I've always worked in the restaurant industry, so definitely have my deal with customers. I'm just like, uh, please take your food, enjoy your day. <laughs> like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a tough place. <laughs> Guys, those of you in the chat... Treat your treat your, the restaurants you go to well. Please, treat those yes. people well. They work hard to provide you with an experience that is beyond what you can do in your kitchen. So just give them some love. Give them a good tip. Just a smile them. goes a long way. Just like they, a simple smile. Show them some love. Yeah. If you see if you see Rhea in there, show her some love, <laughs> and then ask her to hit a whirlwind. <laughs> yes. If she hits it, double the tip. <laughs> exactly. All right. Uh, so, okay, wait, wait. So let, let's dwell on this for a quick second. So you, you're really into pastries. Uh, mm -hmm. Why did you why did you pursue that as a career and not just as a hobby? Uh, because I know a lot of people will will love to bake and they'll just do it on their free time. It's just something they enjoy. But what made you decide that you wanted to actually do that as something that would become, you know, an income generating machine for you? Um, I would have to say probably whenever I was like a junior in high school, I got really into like sculpture and ceramics throughout high school and mm. junior and senior years when I got like really, really into it. And we also started watching like different TV shows in class. And then one day we were watching some baking show. I can't even remember the name of it, but somebody made a chocolate sculpture. And I was like, Whoa, you can like, of course you can. Like, why couldn't you make like chocolate sculptures? And so I started thinking and I was like, there's all these bakeries that do like novelty cakes and stuff like for birthdays and celebrations, but why not make like chocolate sculptures for like celebrations and whatnot? Like I thought that would be something different that I could do. And I found out that I really, really enjoy working with chocolate because it's a lot like clay. The texture is very similar. The way you have to work mm -hmm. with it is similar, but it tastes good. You can eat it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Chocolate is good. I I always found that stuff really frustrating because I'm not an artistic person and I'm very spontaneous, which is why I, I think I lean more to cooking. It's like if you mess something up, you can yeah. still fix it. See, that's could... my problem with cooking. Like it's all so fast and whatnot. Like yeah. I just like can't keep up with it. Baking, literally everything's there for you. You have a recipe, you have to follow what it says, like how much you have to put in there. Like mm -hmm. it's all there for you. So if you just take the time and do it, like it'll come out perfect. Yeah. Okay. So now, now I'm going to ask a, a strange question here because it feels like there might be a, 
a conflict of, of types of personality because you're also super into the EDM scene, which isn't that structured, like, yeah. you don't do this, then this, then <laughs> this, and this. That's my free space. That's yeah, it, wherever I just, like, that's, like, I don't even know, like, my therapy. I just, like, get to go out and listen to music and just, like, be around a bunch of people who enjoy the same music as me and just, like, feel what I feel when I hear it. It's just a whole different experience. It's hard to explain unless you've like gone to festivals before. Yeah, I've, I've never been. Have you been to a lot of them? Quite a bit. Yeah, I got lucky and work in the scene here. So I get to go to a lot of shows and I sell merch for artists that come to the venue I work at. So I've gone to like, in the short amount of time I've been able to go to shows, I've gone to a lot. Like I've seen Liquid Stranger 10 times and I've been listening to him since I was nine years old and you can't really like listen. You can't really like go to electronic shows until you're 18. So when I turned 18, the weekend after my birthday, I just went to Middlelands, which was my first festival here in Texas. And mm -hmm. ever since then, I've just been going to shows and festivals. That's super cool. So you, you said you worked at a venue or you work at a venue? right? I now? work at a venue. It got closed down because of COVID, obviously, sure. but oh, we actually are reopening tonight for a oh, show. Sick. Yeah. It's that's just so locals cool. playing, but it'll be awesome. Like we haven't been in this venue in almost a year. So it's going to be so nice to walk back in there. Mm. What What is the, the COVID situation like there in Houston? Are you guys pretty chill or are things? Pretty it's locked chilling still? out a little bit, but like, you know, we're everyone, it's still mask mandated and everything. Right. Uh, some places you can't have more than like groups of 10, like at restaurants. If you have like a party, you can't have more than 10 in your group. But it's chilled out a lot more here because everybody's, you know, been wearing their masks and stuff, thankfully. So yeah. we've had a little bit more freedom again. Oh, that's cool. That's super cool. Yeah, I've, I've never been in, like, super into EDM music. I super appreciate it, love it, listen to it occasionally when I'm playing Gama because I feel like EDM has, like, penetrated yeah. itself into the Kendama community if it you're has. not listening to it. Then you're kind of missing out on an element of Kendama now somehow. Uh, especially due to guys like uh, Subtronix, Boogie T, and some of the guys that work with Well, uh, Boogie T and Squanto were actually how I found out about oh. Kendama. I yeah. met them in 2017. I got lucky. They were on uh, tour, they were on tour with Snails. My boyfriend worked at uh, Stereo Live at the time, and he ended up being able to get us to meet them. And we hung out with them, like, all night. And Squanto was just – looking back at the videos I have on my Snapchat now, it's so funny. He was, like – doing an airplane and trying to do like orbits and stuff mm. and I have a video of Boogie T like picking up the it was so funny he like pushed Squanto up against their tour bus and Squanto's kendama fell off his neck and he like picked it up and like went up to Big Cup really quick and just like freaked out it was like the funniest thing ever but looking back at it now like they've all progressed so much so that yeah. they probably saw it'd be like wow I can't believe that, like I was getting hyper struggling <laughs> with that trick like so funny so to look wholesome. back on that now it is that's so fun. Oh my gosh. That's super cool. Um, so you, you got into Kendama through them. What was that journey like? Were you well, were at I festivals actually, or what? Well, so I didn't start playing until March. I didn't get a Kendama until March. I knew of it and stuff. And I had always wanted to get into a flow toy, especially like Poi. Like I really wanted to get into Poi. And I just <laughs> never really got the chance to like get a pair or anything, especially with me selling merch as much as I was towards the end before COVID, mm -hmm. I didn't really have a chance to like get into anything, but I always saw Kendama, always thought it was really cool. And then I remember Disciple had their drop and I was like, wow, this is like getting really big in EDM. Maybe it mm -hmm. could be something that I like pick up as a flow toy in EDM. And it's something that I could still possibly do while I'm selling merch, just because like you can sit mm -hmm. there and do cup stuff while you're selling merch if it's not too busy. So mm -hmm. uh, when COVID hit really hard and lockdown was about to start, my friend Victoria got a Sweets Prime from Target and I had gone over to her house and we were going to play board games and she was letting me play with it. And I was just instantly hooked. I was just doing cups mm -hmm. and whatnot, trying to get the spike. And then after I left her house, I went straight to Target and got a Kendama and then went home and just yeah. played for an hour until I got around the world to spike. Oh, no way. Yeah. No way. So you, you mentioned that you were actually trying to get into a flow toy of sorts, uh, mm -hmm. like looking at points. Is that is that common in the EDM world? Again, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm like not familiar super, super well with EDM. Uh, do you if I rolled up to a festival, would I just see poi and like hoops and whatever there just all the oh, time? Yeah. Why uh, is that? Well, because I guess it's like a form of dance in a way, too. So you get to really express yourself and just like listen to the music and flow with a toy mm -hmm. it's a lot of it's a lot of muscle it takes too. like spinning poi tires me out like with two or three songs i'm like 
whew, my arms are tired. Like they feel like noodles. But Adriana, she is new into the kendama scene. She's been a flow artist for four years now. She does uh, the double whips. And so she's been like taking off with kendama flow right now, just mm. incorporating those together. And it's just so cool to see. Like, I hope I'm able to do something like that mm -hmm. soon, too. Yeah, that, that's been one of the cool pieces for me in seeing the EDM community kind of blend into the Kanama world. So I, I've been playing Kanama now for, what, six years, pre the EDM wave, I would say, yeah. at least. Uh, and, and I remember when I started, flow was a big deal. Like, everybody was doing string flow, and then that kind of died out. Like, people oh, stopped doing, you know, space walk <laughs> swap spikes and stuff like that. Like, that just kind of simmered, simmered down. And more recently, because of this rise of this flow culture coming in from EDM, it feels like that's kind of coming back, but in a new modified sense. And it's so cool to watch, right? It it's is, so cool yeah. to see that, that like heartbeat that I was so clung to when I started begin to beat again. It's like, whoa, maybe I can get back to doing my flow lines and it'll be There's, cool again. It's so much fun to just like play with the string, throw your dama around, do hand rolls. Like I just learned pizza toss. That was so cool to learn. Yeah. Like, oh. Pizza toss is legitimately it's the trick one ever, of the coolest tricks you can do. Right? I right? hit and, myself in the face a lot, but it was <laughs> worth it when I figured it out. I was like, oh, now I see what to do. Okay, I got it. Like, yeah, it, and, and nobody knows how to, like, very few people of the new gen culture of Kanama know how to do that stuff, right? It's it's very foreign. You, you might be able to do 12-tab juggle the bird, but you don't know how to do a pizza toss. And the pizza yeah. toss is like... I don't know. It's like when you're rolling in a park with your homies and you just like look up and there's no trees in sight. You're like, hold up, oh, watch I this. Wanna... Whoosh. Yeah. And you just whoosh, yeah. toss that toss that puppy into the sky. Oh man, I love that stuff Me so too. much. That's Especially so cool. like triple spacewalks and stuff. Whenever you throw them really high, like I love doing stuff yeah. like that. It's just so fun. So, okay, that, talk, talk to me a little bit about those early days of picking up Kanama. You, you got into it really quick. You were looking for it, which I think is kind of interesting to me. A lot of the stories that I hear, uh, at least on the show from, from past guests, is that, that a lot of people accidentally stumble into it or are very resistant to it. But you actually took a totally different approach. You're like, I'm trying to look for something to take this, this flow in me that needs something to vent into, right? Yeah. You were looking for a tool to just like extend this flow into. And you I found was, Kanama. Yeah. That, that's a totally different perspective on it that I think a lot of people have had. Uh, what were some of the early weeks like and, and how did that start out for you? Um, the first couple of weeks, I guess, of me playing, I just really focused on cups and trying to figure out how like people would actually get the Tama to like move where it needed to be to spike it. I was like, this is impossible like how do people do this I was like it's just got to be luck or something and then slowly I was like okay no it's not luck like if you move it like this you'll be able to do whatever you want with the Tama and then I started uh just like googling I was like maybe there's tutorial videos for like other tricks to try because I didn't know about the community or anything at the time and uh I just knew of like sweets kendamas because of like boogie tea and disciple but I wasn't really like fully aware of what it all was and uh, I found Kusa videos and Dave Mateo's videos were actually what piqued my interest the most. And of course, at the time, I didn't know he had passed. Mm -hmm. So I was just like intrigued and I just like instantly looked him up and I was like, wow, this guy seems like he does a lot of like string stuff. And that's what I wanted yeah. to get into. And then I like went through his Instagram and of course, like found everything out and still just like was just blown away by like his creativity and like the fact that he was literally dancing with the Kandama. I was like, this is beautiful. Like, I want to do that one day. Yeah. So that oh. was like my beginning stages. And like spacewalk was like the second or third trick I learned because I just wanted to learn how to like flow with the Kendama. And mm -hmm. then luckily, I guess I started at a good time because Sweets did that home at home challenge. Oh, and yeah. so whenever they did that, my friend Victoria tagged me in and she was like, you down? And I was like, sure, like, why not? And then that's whenever I started finding out about the community and everybody started following me and whatnot. And I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. like there's a whole like com community like with this. And then I started finding out like uh, Bradley and uh, Chuxta uh, were like really big on like, I guess me getting into it. And they were just like tagging people in my posts and whatnot on Twitter. That's actually <laughs> how I guerrilla met. marketing. <laughs> yeah. They were like, Oh my gosh, like, look at this girl. Like, look at her go. And I was yeah, like, well, they're like, like thank you. creating new accounts, sliding into people's DMs. Look at this coach that's <laughs> changed my life. You should go follow him. I get those was, posts all the time. Yeah, like, I'm not following this coach. Yeah. It was so funny. And I was like, well, I guess there's like, you know, like a whole community and, uh, but uh lost my train of thought now 
What were we talking about? Oh yeah, uh, the Honda at Home Challenge. Yeah, 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 Honda at Home. And uh, I started getting into that a lot, and that was when I posted on my normal account a lot. And I was just mainly posting on my story, and I wasn't really posting that much on my feed until uh, I think I just started like looking into hashtags and whatnot to look for like inspiration for tricks. And then that's when I found like the Kendama Girls hashtag, and I found Emily and Lauren. And I was like, mm. oh wow, like there's other girls who listen to EDM and play, like how cool. And so I followed them and I saw that they were like posting on their feed. And I was like, oh, so like, this is something that like people, you know, post on their feed and whatnot. Cause I just like really didn't understand like what it was. It was just like a toy to me that I thought that I would like, you know, flow with one day. Mm -hmm. And then that's whenever I saw like there was a whole community and I decided to make a Kendama account to track my progress, just like I had done with my baking. Cause I thought it would be a cool idea. And that's whenever the whole community thing took off. And I just started making a bunch of friends and just like, it just took over my life so quick. Like, it's still just like crazy to me how much has happened in such a short period of time. Yeah. And, and so you, you said, I'm trying to recall now uh, and, and I'm going to forget, but how long have you been playing for? It's been about a year or a little over? It'll be a year next month. Okay. Wow. So in 11 months, that's crazy from when you picked yeah. up your first Kendama. That's yeah. insane. You have progressed incredibly fast. You have become so involved in the community. The amount of love that is just surrounding you, even today, like we got 50 it's so people weird live to with me us to right think. now. Like, yeah. It is so cool. I, I, I want to uh, jump back just a, a quick second and, and say like, I, I think that a first off, your journey is so cool that you got into the flow side of Kanama. Let me just like applaud you for that. Uh, <laughs> because so many of the new gen players just skip that part of Kanama. And I think that part of Kanama is the actual intrinsic part of ourselves that we really want to let out. I mm -hmm. think so many people today like enter into Kanama with this competitive spirit that like I need to yeah. do what everybody else is doing and hit this really technically difficult trick. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's simmer down for one I second. I definitely had that headspace for a little bit, especially during my 100-day challenge. I was like, I need to actually do, like, the basics and whatnot, like, try and learn, like, handle stall bird over valley and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. but I just, it just wasn't piquing my interest at the time. And I was like, mm -hmm. Nama's supposed to be fun, you know? Like, I'm supposed to be trying tricks that make me happy yeah. and, like, pique my interest. And so, finally, whenever I ended up getting into stalls was whenever I started using the string to get to stalls and i was yeah. like oh this is a lot more fun it, to like do stall tricks it's a totally different type of playing too it is I, that, yeah that was the playing that got me into kanama and, and like you you know i i followed dave and and kenyatta in particular they they used to do these edits i'm sure you've seen them or yeah. i'm sure most of the people have seen them but the Flo flonamic duo edits yeah were literally and i've said this probably on every other episode were, were the edits that got me deep into kanama i i had a friend who was a dancer very much like like Dave uh, and and he and I would go into the dance studio and just try and like choreograph these doubles tricks. And it was fully inspired by Dave and Kenyatta. We it's even put out fun. an edit yeah. that was called Flonamic Duo and it's like on <sighs> YouTube somewhere. Uh, I don't I'm even know where, it, no, out. it's terrible. Uh, no, it's I'm so definitely bad. gonna go check that out right after this is over. It's I so bad it. and cheesy, but there were some fun ones. Like you can, if you scroll far back on my Instagram feed, I think there's a clip of us down in the dance studio trying to do stuff. And I'm like doing a kick spike and I like kick the Tama off the string. And it was just oh, like- Oh, I've we, done that so many yeah. times. And we just lived in the moment and yeah. you would get so captivated by this like feeling of flow where you've totally just escaped from time itself. You right? really have. Yeah. You'd... I'll spend hours flowing and I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, it's, I started flowing at one o'clock and it's almost five now. I'm just like, yeah. whoa, like I need to stop. What am I doing? Let me it... eat some food. Like... Yeah. It, it's genuinely one of the most satisfying experiences I think I've ever felt in my life when you are just sitting there. Hey, actually another, another piece I'll say afterwards, but like when you are, when you are so deep in flow that everything in the world just seems at peace around you and you are just thinking nothing yet your body is moving the string is in perfect tension with everything and everything yeah. just is, is moving in its proper form is one of the coolest places to ever find yourself in and i don't know many people that can do that by doing taps and juggles it's like the string flow you can close your eyes once you understand the concept yeah, I've of the done trauma that a moving, few times it's fun i'll sit there for like 30 seconds to a minute with my eyes closed doing taps in the string flow and, and you can feel it you can think yeah. it you know where the tom and the ken are based on the tension of the string it's so euphoric 
Uh, but, but like, yeah, what, what I was going to say is like, do you ever, do you ever find yourself just like in a conversation with someone just doing string flow, moving your, moving your hands around and stuff. You don't even know that you're doing it. And yet you're still fully engaged in that conversation because you can be, it's it so was, cool. It was like that in Vegas. When I went in September, I had my Kendama with me everywhere we walked and I was just playing with it in my hand, just like doing simple string tricks and what not, what not just like looking around at everything, just like doing fun house tricks and just goofing around. So, so fun. I love that. Okay. Um, let, let, let's touch a little bit, uh, on, on your, your story of like personal life, where you're going, and then we'll jump into kind of more recently your sponsorship with Quill and some of the, the recent journey that you've been on and the community development you've been involved in, but we'll, we'll take a break in between those two to answer some, some questions here, uh, from the chat. So before we get to the questions, I want to know, uh, where are you trying to go in life outside of Kanama? What are some of your goals? You said you wanted to, to do baking, full time you're going to school you're hoping to go somewhere else i think you said uh, yes yeah, so my next step is to go to europe i really want to just be able to work and study in as many countries as i can and mm. learn different pastries from there i know there's a school in italy and in france i'll probably go to there's a few in france i'm looking at and then my cousin is in london as well and she works at a restaurant and so i'm hoping you know, with all that, I'll be able to make like a little bit of connections here and there to maybe help mm -hmm. find jobs in other countries that like don't offer schooling for baking and pastry. But I'd really love to just like work hands on in different bakeries and just learn as much as I can from whoever I can. And, and that's the way to do it, right? You're I'm a big hands on person. Yeah. And, and I think hey, for baking in particular, cooking in particular, I think so many people think of it as like, a well, they call it a trade sometimes, right? They call it like a trade, at least in Canada, it's labeled as like a, a you can get your journeyman's in, in cooking or whatever it is. I don't remember, okay. like your red seal, essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. But but cooking and, and baking is kind of different because you're almost learning to become an artisan under different people and the broader experience that you can get in that field, as opposed to say maybe, you know, other trades that, you know, you're trying to learn all the different tools and things to do the same task as everybody else, you know, welding or whatever it is. Baking actually doesn't have that confinement where you can actually begin to craft and curate your own recipes and learn yes. from other people. And so, you know, you're taking a really strategic approach by trying to learn from as many different places as you can. And that's going to set you up for success in the long run. Because yeah. baking I just want to take whatever I feel like is best from all these different places and kind of do my own thing with it. Because there's so many people out there that probably have all these great ideas and just like little tricks and tips that just aren't really known. And I'd love to learn whatever I can to help better myself in the end for what I want to do. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so good. Two quick fire questions. Uh, and then we'll jump into the Q&A here. I want to know what is your favorite thing to bake? Uh, that's tough. Probably croissants or chocolates. I love making tru uh, truffles and I love making croissants. Mm. It's just both. They're two different, completely different things, but I love them both mm. so much. Well, I'll send you my, my, my address later. You can send it. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Uh, second question I want to know is if you could bake for anyone in the world, one, one thing, who would be the person you'd want to bake something for? Action Bronson, hands down. Who's Action Bronson? <laughs> He's, uh, so there's this TV show on Vice called F That's Delicious. And he just goes around places and tries different food and whatnot. And, it's just delicious and I would just love to bake for him one day him and Mac Miller were really good friends as well like that's him and Gordon Ramsay of course but like Action Bronson for sure would be oh. a really like cool person to bake for I'd want to cook for Gordon Ramsay just so that I'd make it on the internet as a failure <laughs> <laughs> right it'd be so funny just like even if it's bad it's just like oh well Gordon Ramsay <laughs> tried your food You're puts on. the bread on your head what I would you? love that <laughs> Two That's croissants. all I want in my life. I, yeah. Right. <laughs> An idiot sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, well, let's let's take a couple minutes here. Let's jump through some of the Q&A. Uh, I'll, I'll read a couple off the post, and then uh, we'll jump into some of the live ones here. Uh, Keys Kendamas uh, has a question for the queen, she says. What keeps you motivated <laughs> when it comes to Kendama? The new friends, new people you meet, the idea of hitting a sick trick, or both? It's probably an easy both, but I love explanations and deep talks. She says she's really excited for this one. <laughs> Um, well, definitely at first, my motivation was just, you know, because I wanted to get into a flow toy. So I was just like, 
I really want to get into it, see what all I can do with it. And then, of course, when I found out about the community and made all these new friends and realized there's competitions, there's teams, there's all this crate. There's a whole it's a whole different world. And so when I found out all about this, I was like, this is cool. I want to like get into this. This is something different. And making all these friends just made me so excited to keep pushing forward and keep getting better. Like we all push each other in like a healthy way. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Like we all give each other Dama dares because, you know, it's like a little bit out of your comfort zone, but you know, you can do it if you try, like everybody's just trying to help each other better each other. (laughs) Yeah. That's the way to do it. Right. Yeah. Having those friends around. I think it's incredible. Like there's very few people who have the individual mental resilience to play Kendama by themselves and still get to a high quality of play. I think it's so hard to make it there by yourself. Yeah, it is. I feel very, very lucky to like, especially have my friends here. Like we have our Kendama jams here. It's literally the best part of all of our weeks. We all just look forward to Fridays because we all get to just sesh together. Yeah. And big shout out to Thor Kendama Collective for that because without him, we would never have started doing this. He just slid in my DM one day, giving me a Dama Dare, and then we just started talking a bunch since then. And shout out to Thor. Been, yeah, it's just been a great also what a cool journey name. for us. I know, right? It's so cool. So Thor's cool. an awesome guy too. Like it's fitting for him. He's amazing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Guyler.g wants to know or says, hi, Rhea. Uh, what surprised you, good or bad, about organizing a Dama Jam? And what tips would you give to someone wanting to set one up in their area? Um, definitely just the amount of people that came to the first one. I was not expecting it at all because I didn't really know that there was already a Kendama scene before my friends and I. Like, I had a feeling there was probably people that played, but I didn't know, like, the Houston Kendama meetup at the time. And so... I chatted with Michael from that and uh, he posted it on his story and helped me get people from like their meetups to come to mine. And it was really cool to like see new faces. Cause I thought it was just going to be like me and my friends, honestly. And then Guyler came and Guyler has become like one of my best friends now. Like I love him so much. If y'all don't follow Guyler, you should. He's crazy good at Go the follow. He's hey. insane. Like he walked up to the Kendama meet just like, juggling and stuff and we were all like really big beginners and we were like whoa who is this guy like what is this so it was really cool to see he's helped us get better a lot too oh yeah and and it's so nice when those you know it's i i think there's a lot of local communities that are in these you know areas that used to have these legends that played and now they're just kind of like starting to bloom again but it's a lot of new players and then you, you know once these new players start playing, all of a sudden out of the grave comes this like legend from the community who like shows up and is like, I didn't even know Kendama was here still. And then they're yeah. like roll into the jam and, they, and then they're like, oh, this is so cool. They're getting revived into the scene. Well, I've seen that over in the, in the California area, like seeing guys oh, uh, awesome. like um, uh, Hanson and Slaughter Dama. They both kind of come out of retirement back into the game really? and, and inspired I by, didn't, you know, see, new gen I feel so new that I didn't even know like all these people that I follow now didn't play before because they've been like posting ever since I've been following. So that's weird to hear. I didn't know that. Yeah. Happened happened in our local community here in Calgary. Like we, we started coordinating these jams once I moved here, you know, Kareem and I and a few others. And (laughs) all of a sudden, uh, you know, a couple of the old older players that were from Calgary, these legends that I like really looked up to for, for play. uh, Like I'm talking about Hong boots, like Misha Logan, who was a GT player and Jared Porter, recently just dropped his new pro mod. Uh, and uh, yeah, there's another guy that so few people know, but is one of the most genuinely amazing Kenobo players I've ever met in my life, uh, Connor Albrecht. And they kind of all just started coming to these jams again. And it was so cool because all of us like kind of newer players or yeah. you know, a lot of us relatively new now had these people to look up to that could actually teach us to get better. And it was yeah. so cool. It is Super it's a different cool. kind of excitement. It gives you that motivation again to like, Ooh, maybe I will be able to learn this trick I was kind of struggling with because they can do it, you know? Yeah, exactly, cool. exactly. Okay, um, let, let's hit a couple more here. Uh, we can always rest way too long on these questions. Uh, there's always so many good ones. <laughs> Marco underscore Ken Chez, uh, says, so excited to listen. So we met at a festival and I'm wondering, what's your fave festival that you've been to? Mine is definitely Lost Lands or EDC Vegas. I think you did touch on your favorite one, but if you want to uh, hit so that I- one again. Middlelands was my so it's hard because Middlelands was my first festival so it just holds a special place in my heart and they never brought it back a bunch of stuff went down with where it happened it was at the renaissance festival where we have our ren fair and the guy who owns the place just like didn't want us to have it there anymore so Middlelands never came back so it was a one and done thing so everybody who went to Middlelands is kind of just like nothing ever compares like that was like 
the one best festival ever, like nothing's ever come close. Until, for me at least, Wakan 2019, which is Liquid Strangers record label, he threw a festival for his record label to showcase pretty much all of his artists on his label. And that was a camping festival. It was just so much fun. It felt like Middle Lands did for me. And to me, both of those just kind of like are tied because they were both just one year. I haven't gone to a second year for either of them yet. Mm. Yeah, I suppose that's kind of one of the difficulties of this year and, and probably a nice, you know, bonus of, of picking up Kendama is Kendama is pretty re relatively easy to participate in, in COVID. You know, it's one of those yeah. few things that actually, you know, works almost just as good, if not better during COVID because you have more yeah. time at home exactly. or more time yeah. to play. So uh, probably a nice replacement there a bit, but I'm sure you're dying to get back to the festivals. And are you, you're going to be at the venue tonight for this show? Yes, I will be at the venue. It'll be nice to walk back in there. I'm excited. Super cool. Uh, Decent Girl from Canada wants to know, uh, favorite Mac Miller song? Ooh, ooh. Favorite Mac Miller song? It's a tough one. Yeah, it's like, uh, I need like a mood, an album, or a mixtape. Like, I need all okay, these little... <laughs> for flow, let's say, let's say you're about to, you're trying to get into the Kanama mood. What Mac Miller song would you put on if you're trying to get in the mood to, to lace a new trick? I would have to say it wouldn't necessarily be a song. It would have to be maybe Macadelic or Kids just because I just belch those lyrics constantly. I'm just constantly singing to those songs. So it, songs that I can just like focus on and sing to or just zone out to are songs I'd prefer to flow to. It's mm. so hard for me to pick just one Mac Miller song. Like I love him so much to just pick one song. Mm. It's so hard. <laughs> that is a tough one. Uh, yeah. I, I really only listen to Blue World every day. So I'll say that one for me. Uh, but let's get a question here from flying underscore 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 V, I think. <laughs> oh, Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Three underscores. When was the exact moment you knew Kendama was for you? Ooh, I know Victoria. that you said you, you were looking into Kendama and other flow toys. Did you actually try other ones or did you just pick Kendama? I did actually. Uh, I got a Levy wand. Didn't really vibe with it that well. And I just kind of stuck to like flowing with Kendama. But definitely during my 100 day challenge, I had this like moment where I just like could not lace a trick at all. Like I couldn't just lace anything. But I still stayed outside for like six or seven hours trying to just lay something and I just just wasn't happening for me that day and then that's when I realized I was like if I'm gonna spend this much time trying to just do a few things this is obviously something I deeply care about because I hadn't really like known if I wanted to try and get sponsored and go that route with Kendama or not and I was just like is this something that I really want to like let take over my life? And then I started like thinking about all the friends I've made and whatnot. And I was like, this is my life. Like there's no looking back now. Like Kendama has already changed my life for the better. Like I don't want to go back to the person I was before Kendama. Mm. So sometime during my 100 day challenge, I really realized it was for me and I'm not going back to anything before it. Wow. That is, yeah, man, that, that's so heartwarming. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That's so cool. Uh, there's a really, really interesting question here. I really like from Kendama Cares. Shout out Kendama Cares, doing some uh, great work over there. Um, uh, Mama RK wants to know if you had the opportunity. Now I can't actually read all of this question, uh, so uh, it gets cut off. So I'm gonna hopefully interpret uh, okay. <laughs> what the end of this is. So Kendama Cares wants to know or says, uh, if you had the opportunity to take three players of your choosing to travel around the world sharing Kendama with underprivileged girls. Uh, uh -huh. who would you take with you? I think is how the end of it goes. That's so hard. Three. I would have to take my, well, cause I'd have to take my girls here. Uh, Victoria, Tara Lynn, and Julie, like they're my girls. I wouldn't even like keep playing every day if it wasn't for them. We, mm. they come over to my house. We just sesh randomly. Like I would definitely take them with me. Yeah. That's cool. I, the per personal question here from, from me, not from the chat. Uh, if you, we're given an ultimatum now that you are deep into Kendama and, and someone, you know, you had the choice, you had to choose whether to never listen to EDM again or never play Kendama again. What would you have to, what would you choose? What? Oh, I, would, I know it's, that's a mean question, but you it is a mean it. question, <laughs> but you know, like 
it's part of me is like EDM is not the only genre of music I listen to. So it would be okay to like listen to other music because I grew up listening to like rock and rap. So I still have that like before I was old enough to go to electronic shows, like I went to a lot of rap and rock shows. Mm. So I still have other genres I can listen to if I had to but I can't play Kendama unless I'm listening to music. It's weird. They like go hand in hand for me. Like, if I'm not listening to music, I just can't focus on the trick that I'm trying to do at all. Mm. I just get all lost in my head and whatnot. Mm. I, I feel that. I feel that. I don't think I could give up Kendama for, I don't know. I think people, people ask me sometimes, yeah. like, if you had to give up coffee or Kendama, I tell Ooh. them, I've had to give up coffee yeah. for, for a season before. It was tough, but I made it through it. Yeah. I, uh, I was trying to find, I was going through tests to find out if I had an ulcer in my stomach, which wasn't fun. Uh, and oh they were like, you need gosh. to stop drinking coffee because it's super acidic and that could be causing the harm. And I was like, don't tell me that. Yeah, I know. Literally like, no, not my coffee. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, my gosh. Okay, well, last question here from, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, are you okay now? It's all better? Oh yeah. We're okay. drinking coffee. Okay, okay. good. This, this yeah, was like a year sure. and a bit yeah, ago. Yeah, okay, cool. So crazy. Um, uh, last question here, and then we'll jump back into uh, some of the narrative here. Let's talk a bit about Quill uh, and, and your recent journey. Uh, Cassie, uh, also an incredible, incredible player in the community who has been pouring in, uh, wants to know if you had to choose, same question kind of as the EDM question, if you had to choose one of the rest of your life, would it be <gasps> Kanama or baking? Dang, your Cassie. career that you've been building? I know, Cassie, why Kanama? are you going to do that to me? <laughs> um... Wow, that's a really hard question just because like, well, I guess like Kendama could, you know, potentially like open up job opportunities, mm. but what what kind of job opportunities? I think well, so many people I, I would be know. like, like Kendama not going to take you anywhere. Yeah, I like, don't know. Just maybe because like for me, one day with my baking, when I have made a name for myself, I want to be able to like teach underprivileged kids how to bake mm. just because I know yeah. it would just like make like just give them something to do different creativity mm. just something they may ne never have tried before because they don't really get as many opportunities as the rest of the kids do and kendama is the same way like i could teach them how to bake and give them a kendama after and teach them how to play kendama like I, it's just so hard for me to pick one of those it's a but, tough one yeah but you gotta pick yeah i guess oh my I'd have to go. Oh my God. My mom's going to get so mad at me. Kendama. <laughs> I know she's watching this right now. I'm sorry, mom. You know, I love to bake. I'm going to have a bakery. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Well, when you do have your bakery, I hope there's a bit of a venue space there that we can come and host jams uh, in the future. I'll come down, down to Houston. Is it right? Yes. Is that where you want to open your bakery is Houston? Back oh home? gosh. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to live in America for the rest of my life, to be honest with you. I, I have family in uh, Mississauga, Toronto. Oh, and, right. I remember we were talking yeah, about this. Yeah. So Canada is pretty yeah. much my second home. And, come to Canada. Yeah. <laughs> it's way better. <laughs> That's really where I'm trying to go if I don't fall in love with a place in Europe. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be a tough one. I, I yeah. hear it's a lovely place. I haven't been yet. But uh, Ben Conte keeps telling me, I, I've got a couch here. Come. I'll take you <laughs> on the you roof. Yeah. I'm like, I don't I know if I'm ready. Wait to go. Yeah, it's going to be a crazy adventure, but it'll be fun. It's such a different place just to experience everything there. I can't wait. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, let's jump back into the narrative here. We'll, we'll hit some more questions at the end of the episode. So if you guys do still have more questions in the chat, make sure you drop those in the Q&A tool. We'll try and get around to answering as many as possible. I do want to remind you guys, if you are listening either now or late uh, on the, the podcast, make sure you put your questions on the post ahead of time. That way I put them in the show notes. That way they don't get missed. I know I miss so many questions every week from the Q&A tool. There's just too many. So a little friendly reminder for you all. Uh, all right, Ria, um, I want to know uh, more recently your journey and, and where it started in your sponsorship to Quill. Because more recently, now you are known as, you know, a Quill Flow member or a Quill yeah. team member. Is, is it the Flow it's team? A flow that, team yeah. It's okay. yeah. So you're on the Quill Flow team. You got announced how long ago now? Um, it was a couple was, months, right? It was a couple months now. Yeah, it was in, I want to say December. I honestly okay. don't remember what day it was. I should probably look and remember that so I know. <laughs> Put it on the calendar somewhere. Uh, yeah, I know. Every, so much cool has just happened. I'm pretty sure it was in December that it was. Yeah. Okay, so in December is when, well, we'll say December for, for the sake of the podcast. Uh, yeah. In December, uh, you, you went on the Quill team, but usually that there's some lead up to that. Uh, so when did you know that you were going to be on the Quill team? 
Um, well, a few months prior, Kevin had like messaged me on Instagram and he was like, we've got our eye on you. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. I was like, what? I was like, there's That's no a- way. I was like, I have barely even been playing for like six, seven months. I was like, a company wants me. There's no way. I was just freaking out. And I was like, is this something that like, I really want to do? And I was just like, I messaged him back and I was obviously like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Like I'm honored. And I just kind of never like brought it back up because I was just so scared. I was just like, I didn't know if that was something I really wanted to do or not because I didn't Mm. want Kendama to not become fun for me anymore. For some reason, I thought maybe if I got sponsored, I would just like take it too seriously and not like remember how to have fun. But that wasn't the case at all, really. Like I just, people, you know, supported me because they liked what I was doing already. So I was like, that's not going to change. So I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. And Mm being sponsored is cool. Like I love my team. They're a bunch of cool guys. Like I feel honored to be in there to be a part of something like this, especially Quill being small as they are. Like, I feel like it's awesome to help watch and witness like a company grow. I think it's so beautiful to see and get asked questions about like what we're doing, what's next and whatnot. It's cool to be a part of something in that sense. Yeah, absolutely. And and Quill, Quill has an awesome team. Like, first yeah. off, uh, Kevin Martin is one of the most generous people I've I ever met. I love him most. so much. He's yeah. so nice. Uh, very genuine guy. We had him on the show earlier in the year. The guy mm-hmm. also I've sent see, out, I saw that one, yeah. Yeah, so he, he he's a beauty. I love him. He is. Uh, he also sponsored Brew Battle and sent out so many kandamas for the event. <laughs> uh, like, it was almost enough that, like, literally almost everyone walked home with the Quill. Oh, I, I love like, that so much. This is so much. sick. Uh, it was really, really cool. Uh, honestly, like Quill, prop, props and Quill, great kanamas, great people. Yes. Um, but talk to me a little bit about the decision process there. Were you offered other companies? Were you wanting to be sponsored by other companies or looking at that? Like, okay, so like I'm I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like if I'm in your shoes, I've been playing kanama for what? Seven months at the time, eight months. And a company is reaching out to me. It's like, I don't know. Like if, if I were in those shoes personally, I'd be like, I don't think I'm ready. Like that's I've literally how I was. Long. Yeah. And I did take into consideration, like, there were a few people, I'm not going to say who they were, but they were just like telling me like, oh, yeah, they've got their eye on you too. Like they've talked about you before, blah, 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 like different companies. And whenever I started finding out all that, I was just like, looking at all the companies and trying to like picture myself like with the team and whatnot. And just like the kendamas that I really enjoyed playing the most too. And I always loved my quill kendama like the kestrel shape is my favorite shape hands down and i just loved playing with it i could never like stop i can couldn't stay away from it i loved it so much and the team i liked all the guys on the team i could tell a lot of them liked mac miller too which was really cool was not <laughs> that expecting was, that was that on the entrance exam it's like yeah i know uh, right you went on quill there we got one question for you do you like mac miller right no I would just, uh, sorry, i wish that would have been cool yeah <laughs> But I noticed that and I was just like obviously stalked the whole Quill team and I was just like trying to see if like, you know, they would be, I would feel comfortable with them and whatnot. And I instantly just loved all of them, their vibe from all their posts. I just, it was an easy decision for me. Honestly, they, Quill is definitely home for me. I'm happy to be where I am. Who, who are you closest with on the Quill team? Nick, for sure. Nick. Lacing Clangers. <laughs> He, before even Kevin had messaged me about Quill, he was like, you're crazy. You're like so good. Just like try these different tricks and just like keeping me motivated all the time. And he would literally message me randomly and just like, have you smiled today? Have you drank water? Have you laughed? Have you had a good day? He would just randomly message me stuff like that all the time. And we just ended up getting really close. And he helped me like get really comfortable with like being okay with being on a team and reassuring me that like it is all about fun it's not going to be like you know strict and not fun in a sense Mm -hmm. so Nick's definitely been the best (laughs) I I want to get Nick on the podcast at some point but I'm I'm not sure if he'll he'll troll me or not he's the funniest guy he is he is the biggest troll ever I love him so much I I, I think if, if people don't know Nick and he comments on your post sometimes it's like it's like Oh no! Did I, this guy doesn't like me very much. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> I, yeah, I, but I don't Nick's even know. A, he's just a big dork. Like he's just funny. But the guy's so honed. He's so good at Kenoma. He Kenoma. is. He's insane. Uh, he's a genuinely nice guy. Uh, but I I love the guy so much, and I I'm pretty sure like he commented on one of my posts once. I'm like, man, what did I do to hurt this guy? 
<laughs> and he's like, nothing, man. I'm just messing with you. Yeah, like, he's, just, he's just trolling with you. That's yeah. how he shows his love. And He and, does, uh, yeah. If and, he and trolls you, who... you know he loves you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and honestly, like, he, he really is a supportive guy. And he will he teach is. you a lot. Yeah, Nick's at, uh, great question, Austin Donovan. Lacey Clangers, uh, make sure you go check him out. He's got some solid tricks. Incredibly fast hands. He's yeah, very good at late he... hands. His so juggling, taps, everything. He's crazy good. Like, I just watch his videos and I'm like, how? Yeah, how do so you do good. that? I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, I, I am curious and, and not to, like, poke and prod at anything, but you got sponsored in less than a year. I'm wondering, uh, did you ever receive any pushback from any of the community? Because I think there's my assumption, and you know, you know what they say about assuming things, so I'll be careful here. <laughs> yeah. My assumption is... Uh, there would be people in the community or a group of people in the community that may have not been so fond of that seeing someone who hasn't played for very long get sponsored by a team when you know other people feel you know there's always this like idea that people deserve something because yeah. they've been doing yeah it. that's not true I don't believe that at all uh, but but I'm curious uh, did you receive any pushback if so uh, what did that look like and how did you handle that um, honestly, I think I pushed myself back the most in that sense. Uh, yeah. I felt like I didn't deserve the spot, to be honest with you. I was like, barely been playing for like seven, eight months. Like there's people who have been playing for years and probably want to get sponsored so bad by Quill. And it just felt weird to me that I, like I might be taking this spot away from somebody in a sense, especially because I hadn't been playing for a long time. And of course, I like talked to it about it with my friends and like mm -hmm. Cassie and Kel's new too and Peachy. And I was just like venting to them a lot. Just like, I don't feel like I deserve this. And they were very reassuring. They were like, you've done so much for the community mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I just like, I guess didn't really realize like what all I have done in such a short period of time, just because it's been so fast, with everything that's happened. Mm -hmm. And I want to say my friends really like encouraged me to go through with it and like, keep me calm about what's going on mm -hmm. and then when the announcement did happen I honestly didn't get I was it honestly made me cry uh seeing all like the positive feedback from my mm -hmm. announcement like everybody commenting on Quill and then commenting on my stuff I wasn't expecting it at all to be honest with you it literally brought tears to my eyes as dorky oh. as it sounds like I couldn't believe it <laughs> I was That's... not expecting because I was expecting pushback I was just because of how short I'd been playing mm-hmm but, but, but I didn't see anything myself. Yeah. And, and from even like, if you take a moment to scroll through the live chat here and, and see like, you know, even prompting that question, you have an army of people, <laughs> a literal army of people that will come beside you and say like time and time again, no, Rhea deserved it. And, and I think fundamentally there, there's a disconnect in the community among some people that have this belief that the better, you know, the more time you've put into something, the more you should get out of it. And and to an extent, maybe there's some validity there a little bit. That's what actually, everybody kept telling me. They were like, you play so much. Like, you yeah. deserve this. And I was like, I guess. Like, it's just, I have nothing else to do besides play yeah. Kendama. But, 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 but the thing I was going to say is, like, you, it's not just about how much time someone puts into something to get what they get. It's actually the quality of effort that they put into something, right? Like, you, you weren't just trying to grind tricks and, like, show that you're the best. You actually went out of your way to create jams from the get-go, you know, yeah. foster a community around you. You obviously have this literal army, like, people in the chat. Guys, you guys are crazy today. It's amazing. Literal, Camel sprites right here. <laughs> a, a genuine following of people that are here to support you. It is so evident even from just scrolling through this chat that you are much deserving of that spot because you know, like if, if it was anyone else who hasn't put in the time, put in the effort and, and got sponsored by a company eight months in who hadn't poured anything into the community, they probably would get pushed back regardless of who they are. Right. Yeah. It's like, Oh, you haven't done anything for the community. You, and, and, yeah. and they get all up in arms about it. But like, I don't think anybody could say to you that you don't deserve it because you have poured in to the community. <laughs> Thank you it's for so saying cool. that. Yeah, it is it is nice to hear that because it's hard for me to, like, believe that sometimes just because I've never met anybody, you know, like, in the community besides my friends. So it's just yeah. so, so crazy to me. All these, I don't want to say random strangers, but, like, at first they were just giving me all this support, <laughs> just, like, more than, like, my close friends were. Like, not Julie and all them, just, like, my other friends that don't play Kendama, like, just these random people I don't even know, just like giving me some crazy support and all this love and motivation. It was just unreal. Honestly, it's so hard to believe sometimes. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's so cool. And and I, that's also the mind, mind blowing piece to me is that you probably haven't even met some of the quill team in person. Am I right? Never met, never met any of them. You haven't met any of them in person. The only people in the Kendama community I've ever met is Kai Dama and his girlfriend, Becca, and then Thor. And then Trip wow. with Jay, Trip with Jay came and to the, And then your Houston local once. community. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. And and that that's like crazy. And it's a whole new world of Kendama that we live in today because of COVID. You know, back in back in the day, like I I'm I'm fairly fairly good friends with Chad. I think I think I can say that Chad Covington. Mm -hmm. And and they're usually very particular about who they bring on their team. You know, their process is they really want to get to know the people, make sure they're yeah. a very good fit for their team. And oftentimes that means like meeting them in person at an event and, and chatting with them, getting to know them on a on a personal level before they ever even consider adding them to their team. And and today in like our modern you know, Kendama world that we live in, that's a really difficult to do. And so is, companies yeah. more and more have to hinge and rely on what we see on Instagram uh, when they look at sponsoring players, which I think is so difficult to do because so many of us put on a face when we're on Instagram. Oh, right? yeah. It's I so totally hard. agree with that. Yeah, there, I can definitely tell when that's going on too. And that was like why whenever Quill gave me like the offer, I stalked everyone on the team heavily. I was like, going through all their posts and whatnot and just like seeing like who they how they interacted with people and whatnot and I was like okay I like everybody on this team like they're cool guys but yeah. that was like my thing too it's just because like I'm not gonna get to meet them before I accept the offer so I want to do as like much mm -hmm. research as I can on everybody because it was still such a short period of time of me playing so yeah it is okay. weird yeah absolutely uh so okay I want to know now, I, we're, we're past the hour mark, Let, let's focus a little bit on future. You know, we, we've kind of caught up to modern day, but I want to know, and, and a lot of us who, who you know, are, are listening here, I'm sure, uh, want to know, where is Rhea going in Kanama? Where do you want to go? What, what are your ambitions, goals? Where do you see yourself in the community in a year from now? Maybe two years. Um, well... Catch and flow seems really cool. I really want to go to catch and flow and just not not necessarily compete maybe one day, but watching that online competition, I was like, yeah, this that, is something I want to get good enough yeah. to like maybe like compete in one day, but definitely go to catch and flow and just witness that a sea full of Dama players just freestyling like that looked really cool. And then of course, like, one day with my baking, whenever I do get the opportunity to teach underprivileged children how to bake, I want to be able to give them kendamas as well and teach them kendama with the time I have with them. Yeah, yeah. that's a, yeah, catch and flow A is like probably my dream event to go to. And I think probably for similar reasons as you is I love flow and catch and flow is like the world championships of freestyle. I am yeah. by no means a great freestyler. I cave under that pressure. I think I'm a better open division competitor, even though flow is like my passion. That's what I really love. That's what I'm I doing. I feel completely I'm off. opposite. Oh man. No, <laughs> when I, whenever I'm freestyling, I'm like trying to put on a performance rather than actually flow. And then I just cave, but catch and flow. I just want to be there. I right? want to it experience so cool. the energy. It's like yeah. a totally different energy. It, it, at least perceptually from the videos, obviously like I'm so naive. I've never been there. I can only yeah. hear the stories, but and that is the one event that like is my dream event to go to more than Same. KWC and more than anything else catch and flow I yeah as soon as I found out about that I was like dream I want to go to that so bad yeah absolutely so uh in terms of of your role with Quill and as a player personally what are some of your ambitions do you would do I, you see yourself going pro do you want to go pro what does that look like I don't even know what all it entails to be pro like I feel like you would have to I mean, like, nobody does <laughs> yeah I don't know like I definitely feel like that's years and years and years away from me like I don't ever see myself going pro for a long time because that just seems like you'd have to be able to like just do anything I don't even know like what it entails it just seems like you'd have to just like be able to do anything on the spot I don't know but that would be really cool to be pro one day but feel far far ways away <laughs> you, in my have opinion. you started designing your own dama do you do you draw do you like to, to think about that I'm more into sculpting and ceramics and painting drawing it's more sketches, in my opinion. I can't detail draw unless it's like a bunch of line work. But that's why I like sculpting so much because you can draw out what you want to do and basically what you're drawing out is a sketch. So mm -hmm. that's like really the only time I ever draw. But of course, I think everybody dreams of their own kendama and what it might look like one day. 
Yeah, actually, uh, Sweet Skin Damas is hosting their their comp yeah, bar, I saw their, that. Like, their uh, Design Adama community contest. So it, I think this is one of my favorite contests of the year because it's like everybody has this little chance to design a pro mod. Uh, yeah, right. Get it produced, exactly. Right? So I mean, all of you guys listening, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I need you all designing those latte mods, coffee mods. Where we're, we're gonna sprite. try. And... If y'all want to make a sprite mod. But but actually coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna do do whatever you want. Uh, this is your opportunity to enter into a competition to have a Kendama design by you, by one of the biggest companies in Kendama, and have it put into production as a as a series. So that's a pretty pretty cool privilege. And the last Damas that were produced were so cool. So get they out there, cool. go design them. Um, okay, so Ria, uh, we'll we'll wrap up here shortly. We got a ton of questions I want to jump through here at the end. It looks like your brother also has a question he wants to ask. Oh think, gosh, he told me in the chat. I saw I saw him in the chat say, Ria's brother, can you do my question? So <laughs> I, I think I have to be faithful to that. So we'll we'll make sure we get yeah. there. Um, but let me let me ask uh, uh, a question here, and then we'll kind of wrap up this this section, and then we'll we'll jump into some Q and A. Um, I, I want to know fundamentally, you know, like what is the one thing of, that you think Kanama has added into your life that you wouldn't have gotten anywhere else? Just like pure random happiness, I guess. I just like felt like I was really missing something in my life for a long time. And of course, I always had my baking, but there's still just like so much that you can't do with baking like you can Kanama. Like Kanama has so much freedom and I see it as like one giant puzzle that's never ending. Like it has like some basic rules that everybody follows, you know, like this code that nobody really talks about, but everybody knows about. And you can just, yeah, literally. And you can just go off from there and do what you want with that. And I think that's just beautiful. Like it's really just brought this genuine happiness to my life that I feel like I was missing for a long time. Yeah, it, like like Austin said down in the chat, infinite creation. This platform, yes, this tool yeah. that has, and, and that's the piece that I love about Kanama is that I can approach it every day and, and that day will be completely different than any day I've ever approached it before. Exactly, you know, there's, yeah. there's no repetition that could ever be done to an exact, right? The, the Tom is always going to spin in a new way. Everything's going to change always. The string's going to be a little looser yeah. than it was the day before. Yeah, there, I totally there's agree. So much variety. So much self-discipline to grow in. Uh, it, yes. It's endless. I love it. I love Kenama My reflexes so are much. super fast now, too. I'll be dropping stuff and catching it really fast. I love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just like, <laughs> I always, I don't remember what I'm, I, I used to work at like camps as a kid and, and we, we would play these games where like they had like uh, belts around them with like these like tags that you'd rip off or in gym class. Oh, like you know, flag whatever. football and yeah, stuff. Like, yeah, like flag football and stuff. I used to like, I, I thought I was really good at that because you just quick hands always. Yeah. Down. It's like, I wonder if that made me better at Kendama. Just like, probably, honestly. <laughs> yeah. It's all hand eye coordination and knees and stuff. So, I feel like yeah, that would absolutely. help a lot. <laughs> all right. Let, let's hit some of these questions here. Let's see if I can find your brother's question in a, a quick second here. But let's let's start with this one to get it going for our final QA from Lutzi Tops and Damas. He asks, uh, favorite liquid stranger set? Oh, definitely the throwback set at Wakan. He played all of his old music and literally just brought back childhood memories because I've been listening to him since I was so little. Because of my brother, he put me on to Liquid Stranger and Knife Party at such a young age. And so being able to hear all of his old music performed by him was just beautiful, in my opinion. So definitely mm. that. Okay. I, I found the question from your brother. It, it <sighs> seems like there's a story that goes with this. Oh and so gosh. obviously it's a, it's a good story if he God. believes it to be. So rish.tx asks, what's the most embarrassing thing that's <laughs> happened to you in SAT class? Also, can you just give me a brief education on what SAT class is? I'm Canadian. Uh, we got a lot of international listeners. We got a bunch of Canadian listeners. Educate us real quick and then and then fill oh us in on God, the I deeps. can't believe you asked this question. This is so embarrassing. Hey, okay. I just read what's put in the Q&A box. I don't, oh I don't my God. All right. So, uh, SAT is standardized testing for, you know, going into college. You have to take it your junior year, junior, senior year. There's the ACT and the SAT. Mm -hmm. And it's just a test to see where you stand and maybe help you get into certain colleges and universities here. And so my brother signed me up for my classes and uh, he told me to make sure I checked everything that like he filled out to make sure it was right before I pressed submit to sign me up for the class. 
And of course, just being the teenager I was, I was like, yeah, it's good. Just submit. And I roll into class and then uh, they're doing roll one day, the first day. And the guy's like, this just, this just can't be right. And I was just, everybody in the class was like, what? And then uh, he was like, is anybody's name in here? And then he was just like, I don't even feel comfortable saying this. And he was just like, is anybody's name in here butt face? And I was just like, oh my God. And he was like, butt face Smith. And I was like, oh my God, like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that, that's mean. Because my brother, anytime he sends me a package at home, it's for butt face. That's what he calls me. So Wow, what a he, supportive brother. <laughs> yeah, so in front of the whole entire class, they I had to go walk up and get my book. I still have it in my closet. It's uh, my SAT book, and it says butt face Smith on it. Hey, yeah. Right on. Hey, well, uh, yeah. not, a, not a question <laughs> here. Well, 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 we won't rest too long on butt face. Uh, we'll, Thanks. We'll let yeah, that that's just so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny, though. Yeah, that's a, he that's just a pretty had good to story. try and embarrass me on here. <laughs> you know what? I'm sure, I'm sure we have all had a number of embarrassing stories uh, in our lives. And sometimes we just got to let those things out into the public. And yeah, uh, I'm sure it would have been brought up one day. And Might as well allow be on them to <laughs> Hey, I, I go through my fair share of embarrassments on the weekly. <laughs> uh, I'm still rocking this terrible haircut right now because I'm trying what? to grow it out. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be going on a date this afternoon. And, and it's like, ah, I, I was trying to mess with whether or not I cut my hair or not. And I'm just going to suck it up and go like this. Because I'm like, if she can't, she can't like me like this, then I yeah. guess, uh, she doesn't deserve me. I'm not yeah, no, not exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, Chrome France wants to say, uh, not a question, but let us know if you came to France for bakery. They would love to meet up with you. Uh, make sure you hit up all the France homies if you're going yeah, there. Of course. The second so I'm many. able to go to Europe, I'm hitting all y'all European players up. So watch out for my message in your DMs whenever I can come because I want to hang out with everybody there too and meet as many people as I can. Yeah. Uh, uh, John John, really John John uh, wants to know, uh, what's your favorite day of 28 Tricks Later? That you've um, done? I want to say the Stunt Fast Juggle Stunt Fast and my Moon Circle Hippie Flip were definitely really feel good laces to like cross off. Mm. Yes, I wish, you know, every year I like sit there on January, the last day of January, I'm like, I should do it. I should do 28 Tricks Later. <laughs> I started it one year, like two days in, I was like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah, I quit every I, year. I didn't I, even try this year. I don't know why I did it. I mean, I do, but at the same time, it's just like, I just did 100 days, and then I was like, yeah. I was like, Which do I want to like, do 28? And I was just like, but, I guess I'll do it with my friends, but, and then now I'm just like, I can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> right, right, but then we always have to remember, there's, there's that girl in Japan who is on like day 1,005 yep. million, whatever she's on. She's never the stopping. best. I love her so much. She's... I can't remember uh, what her name is. Is it Yui or Yua? Yeah, uh, it's Yui. Yeah. Yui. Okay. I, I can't remember which one is the one that's Both like of them are day. insane, but yeah, so Yui good. does it every day. Yeah. She's so such, good. She's just with a smile on her face and her little dog runs up. Like, I love her so much. She's so adorable to watch. <laughs> um, here, here's an interesting question that's never been asked on, on the show, uh, but I'm, I'm willing to tease it out here. You can say pass if you want to. Uh, Lawless Kanama asks, uh, love, Mary kill, Terilyn, Julie, Victoria, your three closest <laughs> friends. Oh, my God. Well, Julie, is... oh, God, I don't know who do I kill. That's so <laughs> messed up. <sighs> Gosh, these questions are going to stump me. Um, You're allowed to say pass. I'm not going to force you to say anything you don't want to say. Pass, pass. <laughs> I can't kill can, one of my best friends. Can't yeah, that, slide into Daniel. our DMs afterwards for the uncensored answer to that uh, yeah, question. Yeah, Daniel, I'm gonna hit you up in the GM after this one. He already renamed the GM Buttface, so <laughs> just got that notification. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Here's a question from Kanama POV. Uh, we we talked a little bit about some of your hobbies, but uh, Kanama POV wants to know what other creative expressions do you engage with outside of say baking, EDM, Kanama? Are there others that we're missing? Um, definitely poise been a lot of fun. I used to play the drums a lot when I was oh. younger, but around like 16, 17, I stopped playing as much just because life got super busy. And then like with college and everything, I just didn't really get back into it. I still haven't really, I, I just haven't had the right time to start seshing again, especially now that when I have free time, I just kind of want to play Kendama. So, mm. mm -hmm. but definitely playing the drums was something I was into a lot when I was younger. 
Is there a, a creative expression or a hobby that you'd like to explore or one that really, you know, entices you that you're like, ah, I really wish I did that. You know, you may not actually want to do it, but like, yeah. I, I don't know, like for me, it's like, I look at oh, uh, like slope yeah. style mountain biking. And I'm like, man, oh, I really wish I could do that. But I know that I'm not going to because I don't want to kill myself uh, anymore. Um, I would probably say like either deep sea fishing mm. or skydiving. I'm oh. terrified of the ocean. Rhea does not like deep water that she can't see like the ground. I can't get in it. Like it just... I don't know why I get like scared not knowing what's underneath me. So definitely like getting over the fear of trying to like go deep sea fishing or skydiving would be really cool. But I don't ever cool. see myself doing either of those You could go things. skydiving over the ocean into right? a deep sea dive. There you go. Get two birds with one stone. Get it done. Get her done. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's hit maybe just a couple more here and then we will wrap it up soon. Um, Epic Palm Tree wants to know, uh, what are the traits that you look for in a perfect Kanama setup? What do you really like? Ooh, so not until recently did I really figure out what kind of woods I liked and stuff. I never thought I'd be that type of person. I was just like playing with whatever, but none of us I've... think we're going to be that person until we start sending in hateful DMs to our favorite companies. I didn't get a weight matched setup. My Serato. I know than... it's, it's so funny. Now I care about weights and woods. I'm like, wow, I've become this person that I said I would never become said. I would never lick my bevel. Here I am licking my bevel. Like it's just so funny how Kendama's changed me so much, but definitely uh, beach has got to be my favorite beach and maple like my and, ideal dream setup would be like a maple sword and then beach cups and a beach tama hmm, simple but I would like that yeah 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 absolutely I don't I I feel like so people ask me all the time is like or actually no I don't feel like people ask me all the time maybe I just say it all the time I'm like the the most lax kendama setup player I will take whatever comes into my hands and I will play it I don't really. Same. That's think how about... I feel too. Yeah, I definitely I... have my preference, but I can really mm -hmm. play with whatever. Yeah. My preferences are so subconscious that I just don't even think about it. And then I'm like playing a set. I'm like, oh, I really like this one, and it happens to be like weight. But I never go out of my way to like mix and match my setups or set yeah, up my strings either. or anything. I literally just like pull it out the box. And I'm like, I'm gonna play it like this because this is how it came to me. I do change my string colors just because I like colors a lot. So mm -hmm. I definitely always snip my string and put a colored one in. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think there's like two crowds there, like Kareem. So Kareem, Kareem and I hang out all, all the time. And anytime he comes over, he's so picky about like his Kendama setups. And I'm just like, it's just a he Dama, is. just play he with is, it. <laughs> he's so picky about his Dama setups. He's like, yeah, I have this one, but like, it's this wood. So I don't really play it that often, but it's yeah. pretty. I'm like, okay, Kareem. <laughs> yeah, I, I tell people, it's like, just just play the Dama. Yeah, you can have a preference, but if you don't get it, just play it anyways. It's still good. You can, it's, it's the player that makes the Dama, not the Dama that makes the player. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> though the Dama helps. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got a question here. I don't know what this question is implying, uh, but we'll find out. Uh, Widowmaker Matt underscore wants to know Kool-Aid and frozen pizza <laughs> question mark. Is there a story here we're missing? It's a Mac Miller song from kids. Yeah. It's just like a lyric from the song. It's a, it's a song name on the album or mixtape. Yeah. Oh, okay. I am I'm missing out. So, but yes, Kool-Aid and frozen pizza always. <laughs> Right on. <laughs> Peaches and Cream is in the chat saying, as long as it can sling. All right. Uh, let's hit maybe two or three more questions here. We got a lot left. We're going to miss some. Um, I, I really like this question here from Kendamalicious. Ronnie, or Cam, Ronnie Tustank, whatever you want to call him. The man, the myth, the legend, who is one of the most consistent players that we all know and love. Yes, know, Cam's the best. So good. He I literally like, love him so much. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he, he, we we could we could. Do you want to spend thirty seconds? We could. Just, I could. We could I love on. Gas let's love on Cam for day. a quick second. Uh, Cam, from all of us to you, you and your Pikachu hat, never stop being you. We love you. You were so appreciated, and you put on for Kendama. You compete from your work, your employment. You compete in competitions <laughs> on your breaks at work. Panda. Never his, stop being you. His panda sessions are my fave. When he goes out in the back and starts flowing with his apron on, I'm like, ah, oh, there goes Cam. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so uh, uh, Cam wants to know, what has been or is your favorite part or thing about Kendama? We've probably surrounded this a little bit, but if you could boil it down into a couple words, what, what is like the thing that you love so much? all the friends that I've made, 
in the community. Like, I love them all so much. Like, I know I haven't met really anybody, but I feel like they're my family now. And I don't, can, I can't picture my life without like talking to them anymore, you know? So hands down, the friends that I've made in the community is the best part. Especially Cam. I FaceTime and talk to him almost every day. And he's just always keeping me motivated, keeping me going, keeping me flowing, which everybody always should. I love him so much. I love everybody in the community so much, for sure. Shout out to all the homies. Those of you in the chat, those of you listening on the podcast afterwards, uh, pause the podcast, send a quick message to that person that got you into Kanama or that you yes, got into Yes, literally. Kanama. Victoria, my sire. Yeah. Give them a little bit of love. If you're in the live chat right now, drop an at of who you want to give some love to. We love seeing the shout outs of everybody that has built this community because it is not a community of individuals. We are an individual group of people that have come yeah, together exactly. to form a community. So uh, give some love to the people around you. We all need it. It keeps us moving and we're all gonna progress together. Uh, okay, let's hit maybe two more questions here. We're getting long and I love it. Uh, the content <laughs> is so good here. Uh, uh, this is a fun question actually. I don't think I've ever asked this question to anyone. Uh, Issa Lisa says, Oh, which do you like best playing Kanama in the morning, afternoon or evening? Do you have a, per a time of day that you like to play? Definitely like early morning to afternoon because Houston's always really humid and just gross outside 99% of the time. So I'd rather get done playing in the morning because I love playing outside. Playing inside just isn't the same for me sometimes. So like for 28 tricks, it was really hard for me to actually find motivation to play inside. Just because the weather was so bad here, I couldn't go outside. It's been like 10 to 13 miles an hour wind here for like a couple weeks. So it's just not easy to play Kendama in. Mm -hmm. So definitely early morning, afternoon is my favorite. Yeah, I'm a morning or evening, afternoon. It depends on the day, but I feel like I'm, I'm sloppy in the afternoon. And it depends on the types of tricks I'm doing. The yeah, evening, totally. the evening yeah. is like my flow space. It's like where I'm starting to like do pressures and I don't know. It's like I, I get into a different state of play in the evening. I'm completely opposite. I like oh. to the beginning. And then uh, I like to play in the morning, uh, do flow. And then towards like evening time, I'm more into like doing more tech tricks. Just because like when I'm flowing, I guess I'm just like, it helps me kind of figure out what I want to do. And then nighttime, I just kind of do a bunch of tech tricks and just like focus on getting better at those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there, there's a really fascinating book that I think most people should read. I really like the book. It's called uh, When the Science of Perfect Timing by Daniel Pink. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and he goes into uh, how everyone has a different chronological clock in them or uh, a, chrono, a chronotype, I think is what he calls it. And there's like the, the early bird, the, the more, oh, what it, oh man, I, I'm going to forget what they're all called. Night owl and like the, the middle lark or something like that. And he talks about like- Night owls actually and... used in EDM a lot. That's... Oh yeah. Insomniac yeah. events uses night owl to like represent what they are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but, but anyways, the, the point of his book is like, he talks about how all of us have this different chronotype in us and, and he goes through like analysis and to kind of help you guide you into what chronotype you are. And, and basically points out like for you, uh, you might actually be better at technical stuff in the morning, but creative stuff in the afternoon, whereas yeah. I might be the opposite and it's all surrounding your chronotype. And then he also, okay, so let me plug this book for a quick second. I love books first off, uh, but this book in particular gave me like the, the best uh, hack for life I think I've ever found anywhere. I don't use it very often, but it's a great hack because it's caffeinated. Uh, and this is what he says. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're needing a boost of energy, he has, you know, crafted this theory and he's tested it called the Nappuccino. Uh, and this is how it works. Uh, you know, caffeine takes about 30 minutes to kick into your body's system. Oh, I've uh, heard and this wake before. You up. Yeah, and it takes you about 15 minutes to get into a sleep and then 15 minutes of nap. So then what he says you should be doing to get the perfect, most energizing nap you could ever get to get back to that canola play is you down a shot of espresso, you start lying down on that couch. It takes you about 15 minutes. And then you get into that nap for about 15 minutes, that actual deep nap. Yeah. And then you wake up right as the caffeine is kicking in. So you're getting that wake up boost plus the caffeine boost. Next thing you know, you're Takia and you're hitting 12 taps <laughs> left and right. Caffeine does wonders for the body. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm going to ask one last question here and we will wrap it up with this. Okay. I've seen this nonstop through the chat uh, throughout the day. What's with Sprite? We love Sprite. 
the spicy goodness and lemon lime Sprite. I don't know what my issue is. I just drink way more Sprite than the normal person probably <laughs> should. Uh, all my friends know it. They always just mess with me about it. Anytime I'm on FaceTime with anybody or anything, you can always hear me cracking open a Sprite. I just always am drinking Sprite. I drink water. Don't worry. Drink a lot of water. I but don't. I drink a lot of Sprite <laughs> to compensate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, at least you're not one of those Diet Coke lovers. I, yeah, I have so no, many I don't drink. Those... Sprite's literally the only soda I drink, and I just yeah. can't stay away from it. It's so good. What's with those Diet Coke people? I don't get it. Like they me either. The, and so there's was, there was Julie. this girl that I oh, is Julie is Julie one of them? She there's drinks girl, normal Coca Cola, but yeah. Yeah. There, there, was, there was this uh, girl, there was like a group of people in my college that were like the Diet Coke gang. They'd like walk around with their two liters and they drink like a liter or two liters of Diet Coke a day. And they're like, it's fine. It's diet. And it's like, Holmes, you rotten no, at your stomach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah literally. <laughs> Anyways, I, I, I don't know why I have beef with Diet Coke, but I just do. <laughs> I, I don't like Coca-Cola either. I just I can't. I just have beef with it. It's myself. Anytime I see Julie grab one from my fridge, she's the only reason I have Coca-Cola in my fridge too, by the way. So anytime I see her grab one, I'm like, oh, there she goes drinking a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're, we're just pointing out all the flaws in everyone on this episode. Yeah. Peaches and cream being too picky. Julian and her Coke. Gotta pick on my friend. It's all love. <laughs> that, it's all love. We're just, we're just embodying the spirit of, of your teammate, Nick. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Giving up the love. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, Rhea, let me say a huge thank you uh, from for myself and on behalf of the community. Thank you for hopping on the review, sharing some of your story, your passion for this game that we all love, for embodying the message that we try to live out on the show here, that Kanama is more than just a ball in a cup. Yeah. It's more than just a simple toy that we have fun with, but it's actually a toy that activates this deeper part of ourselves that, that enters into flow, that brings us into community, that that helps us in the darker times of our lives, yes. you know, escape yeah. from things. Uh, it's escapism, but it's also restorative as well. You know, it's it that is. thing can bring us into relationships and communities of other people that can help us deal with the things that we're dealing with. And and I think you've done that so beautifully and so well. And And I think, you know, from the beginning of this episode, uh, I have just seen the evident love that people have for you. And obviously that's reciprocated uh, through you to the people uh, that are listening. I love all uh, my friends so much. <laughs> yeah, you, you embody con community. You embody it. <laughs> You're killing it. Uh, so Thank you so much you. for having me. It was an honor to be on here. Yeah, it, honestly, a true pleasure. Anytime we get to have a good conversation uh, over coffee or over soda water over Sprite. whatever it is <laughs> over Sprite. Uh, it is a joy for me uh, because yeah, the more people that we can bring together at a deeper sense, I think the better off we are going to be as a community in the future. Uh, let me, uh, yeah, let me plug a few things here for the next week's episode uh, and then I'll let you have the final words on the show and, and, and you can speak to the people what you <laughs> want to say to the people. Uh, let me say uh, next week, we got a, an amazing episode coming up with new Terra Flow member, Max Angel from Canada. I've been really oh looking gosh! forward to this one. Uh, this one is going to be a lot of fun for me. Max is a close friend. I he love is... Max so much. He's a big inspo of mine as well. His yeah. flow is crazy. I love Max. That's awesome. I can't wait for that episode. Not only I that, I think the piece that I'm most excited for for next week is his story because if you don't know this, he's actually written a blog. It's on, on my website. Yeah. Uh, he never met anyone in the community for about 10 years. He is like the enigma, the anomaly in the community where he actually got good without having community. And I like don't understand that genuinely. That literally blows my mind. Yeah. So we're going to dive into that narrative, that story, talk a little bit about his future uh, with Tarek and Nama, his recent sponsorship. Uh, talk about the grind. Like, man, that guy puts on and he he's works crazy. Well. He's so good. And I'm so happy smart. for his sponsorship. That's awesome for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're, I'm super excited for that one. Uh, so if you are a Patreon, we will be putting up the questions in the stories soon for that episode. If you're not a Patreon, you can subscribe for $5 a month. That gives you the behind the scenes access to everything that's going on with the review. I add you to my close friend's story. You can see all the analytics and the data of the growth of the podcast. I laid that all out. I'm pretty vulnerable in there. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we, we got a cool episode coming up. We got lots more coming in the, in the near future in this month. Uh, and I'll drop all that on the Patreon. Other than that, um, I'm going to be working on a Chemex guide because I've been asked, you know, you guys have yeah. seen that I've been brewing Chemex again. So we're going to work on that and we're going to get that up on the site soon. So uh, Worley, Rhea, 
what would you like to say to the community? And then we will wrap it up here. Uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody, honestly, for all the words of encouragement and motivation every day. Like y'all's love is just, it's unreal to me. And I love all of you guys so much for all of that. And in the wise words of Cam, keep it going, keep it flowing. Just always have fun. Do your thing. Don't stress. Kendama's supposed to be taking the stress away from your life. Just have some fun with it. Do what makes you happy. And you guys heard it here. Thank you so much, Rhea. And for the rest of you, stay caffeinated. And I hope your mug never runs dry. We'll see you next week on Sunday, not Saturday, with Max Angel. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye, Rhea. Thank you.